Welcome to the ninth American turn. Well, as you can see, they took both Rome and Germany. So Germany no longer has any income, um, so cannot buy any units whatsoever. Um, yeah, they took Rome as well, suffered a few casualties there. Um, they declared a joint strike, that is, the British had done so on their turn, so uh, they even bombed the Germans before. I suppose in, in this case it's a bit gamey perhaps, but I suppose they shouldn't have done so because the money would have gone to them uh, since they took Germany. I guess I forgot about that, so that wasn't a very smart move. Um, I also... so I could have had a few more IPCs, but anyway, that doesn't really matter because the... Americans have 70 of their own now, as well as, I believe it was about 22 they took from the Germans. So it's not like they're really going to miss the money. But the British bombed uh, the German factory, which caused some damage. It wasn't even that much. But they did lose a bomber, though, in the process. So as far as that's concerned, um, well, again, that wasn't really a very good decision. Um, I initially forgot to have the Germans defend on a three because uh, the American... Uh, and British attack happened from uh, France as well as uh, an amphibious assault. Um, well, a joint strike is a special rule, so I couldn't really find anything in the rules regarding um, whether or not that bonus, uh, that is the defending bonus, still applies. Uh, German units defend a three, the first cycle of combat of any amphibious assault against a, um, a grey territory. Uh, I guess that could even be amended to only applying to the Atlantic Wall, but uh, in this version of the rules that I'm using, of those optional rules that I'm using, it applies to all great territories, and I just kept it like that. I mean, you could have called it something else, fortresses or, or uh, fortified lines or whatever, you know, But so, so I just applied that. So I, uh, I initially forgot about that, but I applied a few extra casualties to the... Um, to the attacking forces. Uh, what happened in the uh, east? Well, uh, they bombed the Japanese factory as well uh, with four American and one British bomber. Um, I believe the damage was about 13 or so, so it wasn't even that high. Uh, but of course, the Japanese have very few IPCs left, although they did retake the Money Islands on their turn. So that did happen. Um, they landed their air force here along the coast. Um, they built uh, two aircraft carriers, a fighter, and uh, two transports. The uh, infantry moved over from eastern United States. Uh, another optional rule that is a uh, national advantage. Uh, the mechanized infantry can move too. Uh, so they moved over from the eastern United States. The artillery couldn't do it though. So they are left in the central United States and um, over here on the western side of the board um, the fleet that was positioned off the French coast is moving towards the Pacific as well and the rest of that fleet is now lying off of the Italian coast and uh, well that, that about summarizes the American turn which ends turn 9, and I'm just going to continue until Japan falls, which really should just be a matter of time. But let's, um, well, let's just play it out the way World War II did uh, in reality, so let's wait for Japan to fall as well. Thank you for watching, and see you on turn 10.